in case you don't know who we are, I'm Hong and this is London, or this is Hong and I'm London, either way. <laughs> um, we usually teach a graphic design class for Seaver, and so uh, I get a lot of questions of, from people in IT who want to come sit in the class, and when Joanne asked me, I said, Joanne, I get this question a lot, let's just do a general class for all of IT. And so Joanne agreed, and here we are. So you have this great opportunity to um, get the software and practice everything that you learn. The first half, we've changed the agenda a little bit, so what you see on in courses has changed. We've decided to teach you all the Photoshop stuff up front, and the second part of it will teach you the design theory stuff, so the graphics, the graphic layout, um, and typography, where you can get images and all that stuff comes a little after. Okay, so usually the way it goes is um, you would look to the assignment tool. If you haven't logged into courses, go ahead and do that. And I'm in the as an instructor, I get all of the uh, the full view. But you probably have just today's assignment, which is uh, the first hour. We're going to download the fruit face, um, and it's a Photoshop file. So I hope you've installed Photoshop. All right. So this first assignment is going to be arranging all of the items on the screen and I'll introduce you to Photoshop in the interface. So if you haven't downloaded it, go ahead and download it and open it up in Photoshop. This is CS6, so for the first time they've changed the interface to black. The very unique and important thing to know about Photoshop is that it has layers just like an onion has layers, and Shrek has layers, Photoshop has layers. Now to bring up your different views, you would go to the window menu. The interface is a little confusing at first. You have all of your toolbars on the left, so these are all the tools, but the different windows and palettes that you get come from the window menu. So if you need help, let us know, Lennon, and I'll walk around and get you started. Right. So from courses, you click on the fruitface.psd to download. All right, so back to the navigation, the interface, Photoshop here. It opens up as a tab. So whenever you open up a file, you see the file tab up at the top left there. It's fruitface.psd. PSD is the file extension for Photoshop. You know how Word is .doc? PSD is Photoshop's file extension. Now when you want to put an image in the web or use it for other applications, you need to save it for web. So we'll show you how to do that later um, for submitting this assignment. You don't really grade anything, but I'll look at it. <laughs> now from the window menu, I want you to bring up layers. Does everybody have layers up? Okay, so on the right-hand side here where you see background, that's the layer that this image is on. Okay, so I want you to duplicate it so that you don't mess up the original image and you have a working copy. There's a lock on this, meaning that it's locked. You can't work with it. It's there for protecting that layer. So to duplicate a layer, um, you press Control. If you're on a PC, it's Control j If you're on a Mac, it's Command-J. Okay, so for the rest of the class, for the rest of the time, I'm a Mac user. If you're on a PC, when you hear me say command, it's control for PC users. Okay, so I say command, you say control. All right, good. <laughs> now we have layer one. It automatically names it. What we're going to do now is break all of these pieces up and put them on its own layer. Okay, so you have to be very cognizant. You have to keep in mind that you're putting them all onto its own layer, and as you do that, you need to name them. So on the word layer, if you double click on it, you can rename it. So I'll call this, um, let's see, I'll call this um, the face. So it'll just be face. Okay, now this is going to be my working copy. The next thing are selection tools. This arrow here is to select, in general, the whole image. So because I've duplicated that layer, I'm selecting everything on that layer for face. 
I'm going to turn off this eye here. If I turn off an eye, one of the eyes for that layer, it's invisible. Anything that is in checkerboard is transparent. So sometimes you have images that are see-through. Is the transparency part is preserved? Okay. How, how did you get the, checker, the checkerboard? Turn the eye off on the background layer. I did. And then use your black arrow tool, the move tool, and slide the face over the layer named face. Just click and slide it over. So that's revealing what's underneath. So now there's like a big stack of transparencies that are stacked on top of each other. Okay, so the next selection tool is the rectangular marquee. And this in general selects anything that's rectangular in shape. Every tool has more tools hiding underneath it. So if you hold down the tool for the rectangle, there's an elliptical marquee tool. And I want you to select the elliptical marquee tool. Okay, so this is for selecting the, the melon. I'm going to select this melon and put it on its own layer. So if you watch my screen, I can't really get a good selection of it. It's either going inside of it or outside of it. The trick to doing this, and it's kind of like driving stick shift, so you have to kind of listen to me right now when I'm talking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you need both hands. <laughs> I'm going to click and drag. And without letting go of my mouse, I'm going to hold down space bar. And that'll let me reposition the circle. Okay, so then I let go of the space bar and keep dragging without letting go of my mouse. That lets me select a circle. Let me do that again. So I'm gonna click and drag, and all this time I'm holding down my mouse. And then when I let go of my selection, I hold down space bar, keep holding down the left mouse button, and reposition it, and keep holding down the mouse button. So space bar is used to reposition the circle. It's underneath the rectangular marquee tool, the second one in the toolbar. And it's up here. So once you have your melon selected, remember how you duplicated the background layer? What's that command? Control or J. What was it? Command J. Command J is to duplicate a layer. If nothing is selected, the entire layer will duplicate. If you have something selected and you press Command J, what you have selected will, put, will be put into its own layer. So Command J and the melon will go into its own layer. And for good practice, make sure you rename that layer. So that's faster than doing copy and paste. You can do copy paste, but this one is just duplicating it in one command. All right, so let's go back to the face layer. Now remember, whatever layer you're working on, you have to look at it, pay attention. You don't want to select something that's not there. So face layer has all of the objects to select from. And go back to your face layer. And then using the next selection tool, this is a lasso tool will give you any general selection. So you can make a quick loop around something you want to select. The polygonal lasso tool will select angular selections. So you can do like star shapes or triangles. The magnetic lasso will attach itself to contrasting colors. So you see how the beats are very green and red. The magnetic lasso will attach itself to the contrasting green or red color as opposed to the white background. So you have to know what you're trying to select and so choose the appropriate selection tool. So in this case, let's go ahead and use the magnetic lasso. And if you want to zoom, it's command and plus to zoom in. Command and plus to zoom in. 
Now, if you're going off the screen and you want to reposition it, hold down space bar, your mouse turns into a hand, then you can grab it and move it over. Okay, so using the magnetic lasso, my icon looks like it's got a magnet on it. I want you to trace around the beats. So you have to click for every point that you're making. Sorry. And you have to do a lot of clicking, but it'll attach itself as best as it can to the contrasting colors. And you go all the way around it. Mm-hmm. So it's not green or red. Right. It'll try to follow your mouse and predict where you're trying to trace around. I know. I do not like it. All right. Somehow it just zoomed up there. And okay. There. That's all right. The good news is that it's very easy to add or subtract to a selection. So I think you can do this one. Okay. And then once you get back to where you started, you have to close the loop. So click on the beginning point. Next to your mouse, it's hard to see on my screen, but next to your mouse will be a little circle next to the magnet that indicates you're going to close the loop. Once you have it closed, you'll get the marching ants. The marching ants. Okay, so then go ahead and press Command J, and the beats will go onto its own layer. So now you can name that one. Okay, now using the black arrow tool, if you're zoomed all the way in and you want to go back to normal view, press Command-0 and it takes you back to your original view. Command-0. Okay, now pay attention to what layer you're on. You should be on the beats layer. Click on the beats and drag them over the melon. Do you see how it's tucked underneath? Oh, I'm on a front layer, sorry. My beats are on top. Okay. So whether you want your beats to be on top or under the melon, your stacking order of the layers count. You drag the layer above or below the layer you want it to be placed on. So now you're stacking your layers. Click on the beats and drag it to the top. So make sure it's on top of the melon. Now, if you want to rotate, so everything has been very horizontal right now. If you want it to rotate your objects to make it tilt, it's Command T. And you move your mouse towards the corner, but not on it, kind of away from it. And it gives you a curved arrow, curved two headed arrow. That will let you rotate. And then you can you can move it. Edit transform. That's right. Well, once you're done, you have to press return for it to apply, and the box will go away. Okay. So while everyone else catches up, I want you guys to try that again and create another layer of beats. And now I'll try to make a bunch of beats. <laughs> try selecting it one more time. There's, there are faster ways to do this, but for practice, I want you to try selecting it one more time. So zoom in. Remember how to zoom? Command plus, and then trace the beats one more time, but make sure you're on face layer. Yeah. So once you've mastered the tracing and you want to go faster, just press Command J to duplicate the layer. Or if you're on a layer and you want to just duplicate it, hold down 
option on your keyboard and you get a black and white arrow and that'll quickly duplicate for you. Just click and drag. Okay, now let's select the bow tie. Now let's try using the polygonal lasso to select the bow tie because it's got good angles. Okay, so you can see the, the difference between the magnetic lasso and the polygonal lasso are the angles that you can get with the polygonal. Now before I duplicate this bow tie, I need to make sure I'm on the face layer, otherwise I'm copying nothing. Face layer and press Command J. And then a quick way to move back to the black arrow tool is just press V, as in Vic, and that brings you, it jumps you back to the black arrow tool. Then you can just um, command zero and then slide that bow tie over. What do you want to slide? Nice. Give him a little bow tie. And remember your stacking order. You can stack it on top of the melon, so the bow tie is sitting on top of the melon. Now I'm going to select this little cherry tomato here. So I might have an odd shape to select, like this cherry tomato. If I use a general circle tool, let me zoom in a little here. If I use a general circle tool to select this, there's some extra stuff I don't want. You can always add or remove to your selection by holding down uh, option, you get a little minus next to your mouse. That will remove from a selection. If you want to add to it, you can always switch tools in between. So now I'm going to go and use maybe the lasso tool or something. Um, and hold down shift, and now I can add to it. But I have to make a full circle. It has to be a loop around the area I want to add to. So Option is to subtract. There's a minus tool next to it. Shift is to add to it. There's a little plus icon next to it. Okay, so that's to add or remove to your selection. And I can switch selection tools in between anytime. This one is the magnetic lasso. So now you have options. Whichever tool you choose, pick one that's fitting for you, what you're trying to do. Is your brain breaking a sweat yet? Doing your brain workout? <laughs> no. Um, no, but that's a good point. If you want to just nudge, you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to just nudge something around. You don't have to click and drag all the time. It bumps it a little over. If you want to nudge something, just use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Okay. So everybody got good hair going for your fruit face? Okay. He's no longer bald. Now I'm going to go back to my face layer. <laughs> if I turn off all the layers, 
the eye will turn off the layers. So I'm going to turn everything off, and all I see now is the face layer. How do you know how to step on this? You can click on the eye, on the layers. There's an and, eye here that turns you know, it on. Just, I, I saw you kind of suck it off. Oh, you can click and drag okay. to do them all at once. Okay, so don't forget the eye turns them on and off. All right, so I'm going to do something and show you a quick way to use the magic wand tool. I'm going to click on, let's see, something that has a lot of funny shapes. Let me use the rectangle tool, and I'm going to select around this mushroom. And I'm going to press Command-J, and the mushroom is going to be placed on its own layer. Like that. If I turn the face layer off, you can see the mushroom. I'm going to move it over so you can see it. The magic wand is the fourth tool down. If you have a quick selection, it looks like a brush. Just hold that icon down and select magic wand. It'll quickly select the contrasting colors for you. So all you have to do is click on it, and it selects all of the yellow. And then I press delete, and it gets rid of it. The tolerance in the toolbar will let you adjust how much space it selects. So mine's set to 20. I can change it to 30, and it'll select a bigger range. If I switch it over to the quick selection tool, then I can kind of drag the area that's yellow, and then press delete. Okay? Jason. Why would you ever use the magnet selection tool if you could get really close to an object by using the magic wand? Because the colors aren't always contrasting. You might have okay. hair or something that's very close together. To deselect, you can press Command D, and that gets rid of the marching ants. Okay, so no. Like, okay, no, no. <laughs> Don't throw me off course. Okay, yeah, and don't forget V will bring you back real quick to the selection tool, the black arrow, to move things around. What is the tolerance effect again? Tolerance gives a wider selection of the color range. So if you want to select more of the yellow with one click, then increase the tolerance. How if much tolerance it has for selecting other colors? Okay, if so it's 100, it'll select everything. If it's zero, it will select all. So for instance, at the top, if it's uh, selecting part of that light color part of the mushroom, I want to lower the tolerance or raise the tolerance. If it's selecting more, or you want to select more, more than I want because if it's apparently it's selecting the light colored portion of the mushroom. Lower. Lower. So my beaks are all stacked all over the place here. All right, so you kind of get the gist of things. I want you to go ahead and finish it. Give you some time here to finish it up or get a drink of water or do what you got to do. Select the rest of the pieces. You must use all of the pieces to complete the face. So you got, you know how to rotate. If you wanted to turn the um, orange wedge upside down, you press Command T to rotate. Okay. If you want to resize, it's also Command T. You can resize. If I wanted um, a bigger mushroom, you just press Command T and then use the corner. Okay, now if you've done what I have here and you notice, oh no, I have a little checker box showing up on my screen. That's because you've accidentally moved that object over instead of duplicating it onto its own layer. Okay, so that's why you have the original copy, the very bottom. So that happens sometimes. If you make mistakes, okay. <laughs> okay, now.
if you want to keep duplicating without pressing Command J all the time, you can hold down Option and it gives you a black and white arrow. And then you can just drag it over and that lets you duplicate as well. Hold down Option and you get a black and white arrow and drag. That lets you duplicate. <laughs> no, that puts it on its own layer. And that, when you click option or alt, I guess, uh, you have to have your selection made before you can start dragging, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, once you have your, let's say you have both of your eyes placed, those, those um, two eyes placed on the screen already, and you want to move them together, and you don't want to have to move it individually one layer at a time, you can select multiple layers by holding down shift or um, command, and you can select non-adjacent ones as well. The other thing you can do is you can link them together, and that is a little chain icon at the bottom of your stack of layers. If you link those two layers, they'll always be moving together. They're linked. OK, the text tool is this T at the bottom here. I want you to put your name on it. Text tool to type the T. Um, now, if it's hard to see, you can go ahead and type something, and then you can change the colors and the font and the size. It puts it on a layer by itself. OK. So the assignment is to use all the pieces and create your face, put your name on it. If you need to crop, this is the crop tool. It's the fifth tool down. And that lets you cut off any excess uh, canvas area that you don't want. Oh god, why do you tease me? <laughs> okay. And when you save for submission, Please only submit a JPEG version. Don't turn in your Photoshop version. I don't want to download your Photoshop big fat file. OK, so you go to File, Save for Web. And all this transparency will go away when you save it as a JPEG. JPEGs will always give you a white background. OK, Save for Web. Over here at the top right-hand corner, you can choose JPEG. And now when you click Save, it gives you the option to give it a file name. And you can put it on the desktop or wherever you want. And then go back to Courses. And in the Assignment tool, you're going to submit it through the Assignment tool for a fruit face. All right. I'm going to hand it over to London. He's going to show you the second assignment. Since you're in... If you're already in Courses, go ahead and download the old image file from Courses in the assignment tool. 